Okay, so we have met in, uh, in various Julia conferences, and of course I've been using Julia since uh, uh, Toivo Henningsson introduced me to, to Julia uh, 2015 or so. Great language, and of course we have, uh, I found out that it would be a perfect uh, prototyping platform for investigating new ideas and new constructs for modeling and simulation. Uh, so this is what, uh, and in particular I work with Martin Otto quite a lot. So the talk we will give has a, a little bit about motivation and also some, two slides about introducing what is the Modia language. Then we have a, mo uh, a web app also, and we will talk about Modia Media. And then we have some results actually where we have experimented with various symbolic algorithms that we will di discuss. So, uh, as you know, I mean, Modelica is really powerful and, and a lot of people are building large models. It has equations, objects, and connections, essential uh, features for, for building large uh, uh, lumped element models. However, we know it's very static. It re requires recompilation if an array dimension is changing or a component class is changing or a medium is changing. So we, we should try to figure out techniques to avoid these obstacles. And uh, furthermore, the Modell Modellica has this algorith algorithmic language as well. You can define your own functions, but there are many missing pieces of it. I mean, modern data structures and parallelization and so on, uh, which is available in, uh, in Julia, for example. So you can build complex models, uh, although they might be hard to understand. I mean, there is no standardized 3D representation, for example. And for medium fluid package, for those who looked into it, you realize it's really complex semantics of Modelica that is utilized, and it could be done simpler. And of course, translation and simulation should be, should be made faster. faster. That is what all users are saying, of course, because they can build complex models, but they simulate and uh, slow, uh, too slow, slow, and um, translation is also a problem then. So we have started to, to uh, work on this innovation platform, we call it Modia, uh, based on Julia. And uh, yeah, the nice thing is, of course, Julia is designed for scientific compute computations, which means that uh, arrays and, uh, and matrices are built in and very much optimized. So in that, that sense, it, it does have a MATLAB-like notation. Uh, but you can also have many, many other data structures as well. And you can choose whether you use it as a scripting language or you do provide typing and you use it uh, more like uh, uh, any programming language. It has multiple dispatch, so there are innovations in the language as well. The nice thing is that it also allows metaprogramming, and that was one reason I really fell for it, because then you can make d domain specific language extensions and you can do symbolic processing. So you can actually do these symbol uh, symbolic uh, transformations of the equations in order to get them into a more efficient uh, form for, uh, for execution. And of course, you can do all these graph uh, theoretical uh, methods as well. And it does have just-in-time compilation, which is nice also if you have a changing structure of your model. So uh, we, it's, a, it's an open source project with uh, certain different modules. And uh, Modia is uh, the equation-based modeling. I will explain shortly. There is now, we are working also on something called Modiator that is a uh, 2D uh, and 3D model editor. Actually, it's a client side, so we, it's uh, written in JavaScript. So uh, Modia Math uh, is for uh, the simulation environment. And uh, Modia 3D is a specialization 
of uh, uh, multi-body uh, modeling capabilities. So instead of using the generic features for multi-body modeling, so uh, as is done in Modelica, there's a specialization based on that you always know what kind of structure the equations have for multi-body modeling. Modia Media is another package we have developed, and we will talk briefly about that. And then uh, there's also work on converting Modelica models, so to importing, importing them from Modelica. So uh, that is Modelia. Uh, but it's, uh, it's partial. That is for the benefit, as Chris said also, for the benefit of being able to test. I mean, we need, uh, of course, there are so many models in Modelica, so we want to have test models for, uh, for what we're doing in general and, of course, for the numeric methods as well. Uh, contributors, yeah, myself and uh, Toiva Henningsson, uh, Martin Otto, Andrea Neumeyer, who is working with uh, Martin, who is not here, Oscar Ostrom, where is he? Uh, oh, up there, yes. And uh, Chris Lohmann. Uh, who is not here. Okay, just to get, so you get a little feeling for what is the Modia language. Uh, so as you, as you see, now I should press the, the, the right button, is that? No, it's wrong, absolutely wrong. <laughs> okay, is it that one? Yeah. Okay, so you see we have corresponding constructs. This uh, at sign model, that is a macro. So this is how you define these domain-specific language extensions. You can have macros, but it's not text macros, it's structural in the sense that when you can afterwards actually look at the structure of the content. So, uh, so for example, you, you get the structure of the content of this macro between begin and end, and you can make transformation of it. And you see down here, for example, there are equations. So that is allowed syntax, and you can manipulate that to change. You have an abstract syntax tree that you can modify in the symbolic processing. But you see, it's very similar. I, I did it in this way. I mean, you have a connector concept here. But it's just a model, so we simplified the syntax a bit. Uh, there is a one port, and this is how you write it, and the resistor in a, in a similar way. This is a, how you make components. This is how you can build it together, and we reused a lot of, of uh, uh, mechanisms. So, I mean, this is how you construct a resistor with a modifier, so we have the similar concept as over here, just a different syntax, and we have a connect statement. Uh, by the way, also, we, we don't need the, the ground. Uh, we do further analysis to avoid this problem that uh, Martin will talk about shortly. So this is essentially the model, Modia language. Now, we realized uh, that, of course, we need to have... Uh, Julia doesn't have... Uh, it has limited user experience, user interface support. So, <coughs> so we realized that we need to do a proper uh, uh, client application. And Oscar was helping me in <coughs> during summer. So we had a little summer project going on. It's called Modiator. I will show a couple of videos explaining what we have been doing. Um, the nice thing, we, we want to, yeah, first of all, of course, Modelica diagrams, uh, I mean, this kind of stuff we, we wanted to do, of course, but we wanted to go further. So, for example, exploring fundamentals like CSD, constructed solid modeling, that you can actually build up 3D uh, objects like this that you can use, for example, for multi-body modeling. Uh, and also shape parameterization, these kind of shapes that it's a combination of, of shape parameters and CSD in order to build these kind of mechanisms. <coughs> now, what we did was to focus, uh, so this was uh, just exploring, then we focused on 3D model uh, composition and couple it to uh, Modia 3D. And uh, I will show, so that is how 
you would build. Um, this is building, yeah, first of all, you, you can do in the browser, this is running in the browser. So that is, first it was just the kinematic simulation. Now we are moving one object and introducing a joint between these two, and then we can continue. This is just the kinematic part, but you run it in the browser. You so Julia is not involved in this case, and Modia 3D, everything is in the browser, it's JavaScript. But if we want to, uh, uh, yeah, if we want to do simulation, of course, then we couple it to Modia 3D, and uh, to in order so for of all these objects here to determine the properties from geometries, so the, all the geometries are sent to Modia 3D. The properties are calculated, and. Um, these special 3D mechanics algorithms are utili <coughs> utilized. And there is also collision handling. And it's very fast translation because you don't, since there are several objects that are very similar, but of course it's Julia functions that actually do the job, and we don't need to do this symbolic transformation of the Julia functions. It's already done. Martin knows how to, how to do that. So the only thing is that we need to communicate with uh, the server running Yulia and uh, simulate it and then get the animations back. So, and this is done then animated in the moderator uh, client. So th this is, uh, yeah, I, I could also mention, of course, that there, are, there is work going on now to in, in enable running Yulia also in the server <coughs> using the WebAssembly uh, low-level language. And that, of course, would, I mean, there is a prototype running and there is funding for such a project going on at MIT, which means that uh, soon you, you don't need to have a client-server architecture, you can run it in the browser as well. <coughs> uh, I wanted to go a little bit further concerning mo Modelica models. And it has always irritated me that building Modelica models is so hard, and in particular, parameterize them. So I, I spent a little time to actually uh, do these kind of things that where you, this is the engine model of the multibody library, the example, and <coughs> to enable sliders of this kind so you can see immediately what effect a change of a parameter would, would make. Uh, so this means that there is an interpretation of the Modelica AST inside the browser uh, in JavaScript, so evaluation of Modelica expressions and so on. That is what goes on. But it's really fast, so you can do it. You see that when you slide the user sliders, so you get immediate response. Then, Martin will talk about Modia Media. One slide here. Uh, we wanted... Uh, uh, to evaluate how we can utilize the data structures from Yulia to make fluid modeling, media modeling much better. Uh, but this was work together with Chris Lohmann from uh, uh, Mr. Bücher Electrical Research Laboratory. Uh, it's, it's really straightforward, more or less what you're saying is, uh, uh, instead we have a, a huge library of Modelica media with uh, replaceable packages, uh, you have just a dictionary of uh, uh, dictionary of media, so it's like get medium, give the name of the medium, in this case, say, uh, N2. Now you have a reference to this medium data structure. Uh, okay, now uh, you say, okay, I would like to evaluate the medium at uh, one bar and 300 Kelvin, and then you say set state PT, so you know the state is PT, you provide the medium, the pressure and temperature, and you get the state, uh, the internal state of this medium, and uh, if you afterwards want to update it, uh, uh, you directly update it so you don't uh, allocate uh, memory f ex uh, explicitly. Now, if you have the state of this medium at this, pres at this pressure and temperature, you can calculate all the other uh, properties of this medium, so density, specific enthalpy, and much others as well. It looks completely straightforward. Uh, the implementation is completely straightforward because it's just a, yeah, it's, it's Julia language. Uh, you don't have to think about 
replaceable redeclare extent. Uh, it's just straightforward code. You can use it straightforwardly, and you can also use it straightforwardly in the model. Uh, uh, and of course, since it's just uh, scripting, you can say list media, list all the media. You can make a standard plot of the medium. Uh, so it's, if you this, you get this plot, or you can get other plots with just one command. Uh, so it's the media part, the implementation is orders of magnitude simpler and more powerful as Modelica Media. And we want to transform the complete Modelica Media into this form. The next thing is also the fluid network is much simpler. The only thing what they are doing is you take this state here and you propagate this state along the complete connection structure. So the medium is defined at one place, placed in one of the connections, and then the state is moved around. Okay, maybe. So we expect that uh, in this direction, uh, yeah, we can do much more. So we, for example, that they can change media during simulation uh, without recompilation, these kind of things. Okay. Okay, we will. We will not now. As I said, we we have have some success in so, so regarding certain symbolic algorithms. So we will talk a little bit about this. The th first thing is that uh, I will talk about the compilation time or translation time for Modelica. I, today, uh, yeah, as you know, you, it's easy since it's object-oriented. You can easily instantiate hierarchically, so you can build really large models with millions of, equ of equations. But then it takes a lot of time to compile it or translate it because yeah, the semantic specification, first of all, is based on flattening. So you, you are cloning variables and equations. And, um, and uh, as, I f as far as I know, all the tools are doing that. Uh, and that I've be <laughs> been looking into al alternatives for how you would uh, be able to compile. And also, most tools also expand matrix equations. Although, as I understand, Open Modelica, so someone said Open Modelica has, in certain cases, uh, the ability, was it you, Rüdiger, that said that uh, to keep the equations together, uh, uh, matrix equations together. So, uh, and that is also important, of course. And uh, we have been investigating that in the Modia concept, uh, um, uh, in relation to Modia as well. And the reason is, of course, a lot of memory is also needed. It, it's a, and the, the translation is unnecessarily long because you do the same thing on all the equations. If you have 100 instances of one component, you end up doing the same analysis 100 times. It can be di partly different, but most of the equations are handled in the same way. And you get large C code, so the compilation in the C compiler takes also a long time. <coughs> it is possible to do separate translation. And parts of the equations of a component, it's an observation that we have made that they are always executed in the same order and with the same causality, independently of how the component is connected. That's part of the equations. So you don't need to have this sy symbolic transformation on applied to all the equations. So in the, the, for those equations, you can put them into functions instead. And of course, then you can even compile those functions down to DLL or, or, or binary code once for, for such a component class, and then just call these functions many times. And uh, of course, you finding such sequences, you, you, do, you can do once, and you just record that, OK, now we have separate tra translation for this class. And when we encounter a new instance, we know that it's available. Uh, so it's much faster translation. And uh, so the question is, how do you find it? And th uh, the trick is that, uh, yeah. I included this slide just for reference, so we, we, it's uh, in the video. I, I will not talk about the, all the details, but uh, you, you have to, of course, to consider the DIE with the connector variables, the potentials of the connectors, and the flow and streams of the connector, and input outputs, and so on. 
So you need to have this form of the DAE. And then, in order to find this, uh, this partitioning, what you do is to do this artificial uh, connecting every, all, every connector to every other connector. In order, so this is what, it's a generic environment that relates all connector variables, so in this way. And, and this G function has full incidence. So that is how you set up when you are transforming, you're now partitioning one particular class and you're trying to find these functions that I'm talking about. Uh, okay. By the way, it could also might in, uh, include uh, derivatives. So uh, this is uh, the simplest case, but it could also have derivatives. What happens then? You do a BLT, and uh, what happens is, of course, this is a generic way. I mean, one thing, since this G function has full incidence, it must be in the same block. But there will be other equations in this block as well. Typically, those equations that relate variables in, that are used in the connector. And, and then so this block is placed somewhere, and so there are cer certain blocks in front here, certain at the end, and these blocks can be combined into one function, F1, and these blocks into F F3 then. Uh, now, of course, this is, so far it's fine. I mean, this is a general statement. The question is, of course, uh, will, is this a typical situation or not? I mean, it might be that this block will be the whole set of equations, for example, and then it's meaningless. But it turns out, for example, if we look at certain cases, such as a heat exchanger model from, uh, the, uh, from uh, Modelica Standard Library, with the ten spa uh, spatial segments, for example. This is actually, the, the G block is here, and this F2 that is in the same block as G, but you see here, it's a lot of equations down here, and you see they even a scroll bar, so it's a lot of equations that are always the same order and always the same uh, you have to solve for the same unknown variable. And then there's a little bit of F1 as well. And the dimension of F2 is just 24 compared to 514, that is a whole block. So when you instantiate several heat exchangers, you have to only care about calling these functions, of course, many times, and treating these 24 equations multiple times because that those are close to the border, to the interface of the component. So th this is fine. For a robot model, for example, you get, uh, uh, actually, the dimension of F2 is zero. And uh, so it's uh, just F1 and F3, and the G is on its own. And this is, of course, the, the reason, and it's consistent with, since you are able to write Modia 3D uh, models as functions, as Julia functions, this is a reason, of course. But it applies also, we have tested a lot of different models, and it's the same phenomena. Uh, it's, of course, it's hard to, to prove how much benefit would you have. It depends on the model. But uh, when we have tested, it works very, very nicely. So this is one approach that, um, uh, yeah, uh, so it's a system systematic method of splitting the equations, and user doesn't have to consider how to do it. Uh, it's still limited testing, but it shows that a substantial part of the equations can be moved to separately compiled functions. Uh, so there is a potential for a lot of gain concerning the translation time. Uh, and then I leave it over to you again. Okay. <coughs> Uh, so in some areas, index reduction is really important, especially for mechanical systems. And uh, here, uh, uh, use the structural algorithm from Casas from 1988 to transform a high index system to an I index zero system to solve the constraint. Uh, but the algorithm is for scalar equations, so you uh, 
whenever you have error equations as for mechanical systems 3D, you have to first flatten it, and then you apply the algorithm, and then you, the whole structure is lost. Okay, uh, Illink developed now a generalization of uh, the algorithm, so that uh, from the outside uh, you provide. Uh, Here's an example. So these are error equations. So from the outside, you provide error equations. And at the end, after uh, this generalized mental lead is applied, you get, again, error equations. Uh, so uh, the structure of the equations is, is kept. And uh, now if you have error equations, so in Julia, you can just directly write then error equations, that are scalar equations. And uh, then the, in some, or in many cases, uh, then you can also generate more efficient code if you know these are vector equations, the more efficient machine code. Uh, this was published uh, at the Modelica conference 2017. Uh, another thing, a little bit hidden, uh, uh, tearing uh, is a core algorithm in many Modelica tools, so the there are two, two reasons for it. First of all, uh, to reduce the size of algebraic uh, systems. And uh, if you have a high index system, uh, that you reduce the number of states. It's also very helpful. So the main thing is you have an algebraic equation system. Z are the unknowns, G are the equations. So typically, you have more unknowns as equations, so it's underdetermined. And uh, you want to split these equations in such a form that you uh, explicitly solve these equations, uh, the unknowns, as much as possible for for the explicit variables, so more or less the set T, the tearing variables, are yeah, given from the outside, then you can calculate the explicitly variables, and then you get a residual equation. And you want to have this block of the residual equations as small as possible. For example, you have here four equations in four unknowns, and with this tearing, you say, yeah, I transform this to one equation. Given Z4, I can calculate Z1, Z2, Z3 in a forward sequence, and I can compute the residual. Now, there are many publications of this uh, of tearing algorithms in, uh, uh, okay. Uh, but uh, uh, there's one algorithm that I and Tilling developed in 1999. We didn't publish it in order to give uh, Daimola some <laughs> benefit of our other tools. Uh, and uh, and uh, when we reinvestigated Namodia, we said, uh -huh, okay, what is the state of the art? And uh, I investigated what is the state of the art, and uh, I was uh, surprised. Yeah, I had not the feeling that something better as this algorithm was developed in the meantime. Uh, but I s searched more, and I detected in 2016 there have been really a key algorithm, Tarshan again, but some other people, incremental cycle detection in directed acyclic graphs. Uh, and uh, it's really nice... Uh, uh, you can really nicely combine it with this one. And uh, when we combine this, uh, so we publish now this algorithm together with this extension. And uh, uh, it's a really nice tearing algorithm for object-oriented models. Uh, so if you have n equations and m are the incidents with number of edges, uh, then the running time is, uh, okay, for some examples, order n, the number of equations, uh, but the worst case complexity is order n m. So it's quite fast. Uh, just to give you an example, one test example is a loop. So one algebraic loop is one million unknowns, one million equations. You reduce it to one equation, needs about in my notebook or two seconds. Okay, uh, if you think you can improve your tearing algorithm in your tool, maybe have a look at this paper and also at the Julia implementation. So this, you can just look at the GitHub and you see the Julia implementation of this algorithm. The next thing is singularities. Uh, there are Modelica models that fail on well-defined physical models. So they are structurally singular at compile time. They have singular Jacobian at runtime. And here's a, an ugly model here. And if you hide this in a larger model, I don't think that any Modelica tool currently is able to treat the system correctly. Uh, OK, so what you see here is, is looks simple. Yeah. Inductor, two resistors and zeros, and any inductor, no... Uh, 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 yeah, no, uh, uh, what's called uh, 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 zero potential here. Uh, good. Uh, in, the, in the same paper, a little bit hidden, uh, 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 the algorithm was given by me. Uh, it's also here given. The idea is 
in order to solve these types of systems. In object-oriented models, there are a lot of equations that are just linear with integer coefficients. So all the connection equations, some of the flow variables are zero, or the potential, uh, relative potential between two connectors is also a linear equation with just integer coefficients. So you co collect everything together, a times x equals b, a and b are just uh, uh, integer uh, coefficients. Of course, you have uh, usually less equations than unknowns. And now you just analyze this system and remove every singularity that you detect. And since it's integers, you can make, make it exact without any problem. Now use this as a pre-processing step and uh, then use the typical algorithms afterwards. So if you apply this algorithm on this system, <coughs> the following happens. It says, aha, uh -huh, there's one redundant equation, remove it. Uh, oh, the potential are not well defined, but I can guarantee yeah, uh, these potentials are only present in this integer equation nowhere else. So I know that I can set one of them arbitrarily and it will not influence anything else in a bad way. So I just pick one of them and set it to zero. Uh, then Pandelita's algorithm will fail on the system because the index, the state constraint is not structurally visible. Okay, then replace this equation by this equation and uh, now the state constraint is structurally visible and you can just apply Pandelita's algorithm. I really hope uh, to give you motivation, all the tool vendors, Daimola, Modelica, Simulation X, please implement this algorithm. At DLR we have several systems where we have problems with this. <laughs> and uh, it's really ugly to rewrite all these models just because the tools are not clever enough currently. Okay. Uh, Modelica tools transform, at least conceptually, DIEs, implicit DIEs, to a conceptual index zero form. So x dot is a function of x and t index zero form. Okay, uh, one thing is that the sparse net might get lost in some cases. Uh, the bad thing is that there are several systems that are important for DLR, sorry, uh, that might require dynamic state selection then. Uh, so more or less during simulation, uh, you have to reselect the states that you use uh, and uh, you have to change it during simulation. And unfortunately, at least for our systems, whatever we use, uh, when it's becoming realistic, all this is not working nicely. So Modelica tools, con they, it, it, okay, they're doing it, but extremely in a bad way for realistic systems. So more or less, you need always a <laughs> mechanical specialist that uh, fixes this, and I'm just, uh, yeah. It would be nicer if my colleagues would not come to me, but they just drag it together and it works. Good. Uh, now, uh, I found uh, a very interesting form. Uh, you see here, every, okay, so, uh, say it in such a way. Probably you know there's a very famous book from Brennan, Campbell, and uh, Petzold, and somewhere hidden there is a uh, five or six pages uh, proof that, every DI, uh, that which, which types of DIEs can be solved with the BDF method. Uh, and of course, uh, I guess every engineer is just not reading it. Okay, we believe the result. But internally, there's one interesting point. In order to prove their, in order to prove their uh, claim, they have an, an internal proof that every differential algebraic equation can be transformed to this form. So it's a very general statement. Uh, and I just explain it, uh, okay. You have a general DIE high index. Uh, you transform it in this form where you have one part where the x dot is not appearing, and this Jacobian here is present. So if you make this with respect to x dot and this with respect to x, then this Jacobian is regular. And you can transform every DIE to this form. Okay, the nice thing is here now, the sparseness is not lost. Right, maybe I can, sorry. Uh, and uh, this system you can solve with the BDF method and uh, you don't need the dynamic state selection. Uh, to give you one important example, uh, if you have a free-flying body uh, and just look at the rotation and you use quaternions to describe it, you get these seven equations. So angular velocity is a function of the derivative of the, of the quaternions, uh, then the momentum balance and then the quaternions constraint. And you can this is, is exactly this form. So you can show this is exactly this form. And therefore, PDF methods converge. And uh, you can integrate it directly. Uh, in 
every Modelica tool, what you would have to do is, you know, that this works. Uh, uh, you would have uh, to select one of three of these four cues as states, and during, simula during simulation, change uh, the meaning of the states. Okay. Uh, we made, made some tests. So, uh, yeah, okay, I made it. Okay. Uh, we made some tests uh, uh, just for these seven equations. Uh, with one Modelica tool that transforms the index zero, uses Dassel and changing states, uh, about 4,000 model evaluation with Motia, index one DIA fixed states, Sandy als Ida, about half of the model states, about 40% faster running time. And uh, okay, here you have some more. These are all three flying bodies together with the uh, boundary, uh, with collision handling, and uh, works also nicely. Last slide from this side. Uh, Healing myself has worked since here on multi-mode systems, so systems where, the, where you have drastic changes, and uh, at some time we gave up, uh, because uh, uh, whenever you have a change in structure, then the index may change, or direct impulses occur, and it's not so bad with the delicate tools, and uh, it's also a blocker. Then we learned, uh, we are investing in this group, and we joined together, and then we had several meetings, and there's a really good paper now, model, multi mode e models challenges here in implementation, and I want to uh, give you one important formula. Okay, if this special DIE form from here, this one, is also linear in the derivatives, uh, yeah, and uh, at an event uh, the model is changing, so the number of equations, the meaning, and so on, uh, then uh, one can prove with some preconditions that if you integrate from from the x value before the event to the new value uh, with an implicit Euler method, uh, the step size goes to zero, uh, then you get the exact mathematical analytic solution. Of course, this is hard to realize, but uh, the solution can also be written in form of this ABF, and this is this one. So you take the A value at x plus, x plus minus x minus, and the constraint also x plus. And you solve this nonlinear equation for x plus, and then you get the solution. So this is the a generic way to solve systems with Dirac impulses. Here's an example. Uh, you have a clutch between, ideal clutch between two inertias, and uh, ideal clutch is either engaged or not engaged. And uh, if they are not engaged, you have four states. If it's engaged, two states. And uh, when you, when the angle velocity is different, and you engage them, then there's a Dirac impulse, and because this element here transforms a mechanical and electrical energy, because you have a algebraic equation here, then you get a Dirac impulse also in the voltage of this capacitor. So it's a multi-domain Dirac impulses. So these things can now be simulated uh, in Modia, uh, not in the version on the web, but the uh, private version. Initially, we had in such a form that you, all that you need to recompile at the point, but we have now also a form where it's possible you don't need a recompilation. Uh, you just have the same code, and uh, you can simulate this with Dirac impulses, and the index is changing from one to one, zero and zero to one. But there is still more investigation be before we do it on the web, but it's very promising now. Do you want to make the summary? Well, uh, just, uh, uh, I mean, the goal we have is to uh, investigate algorithms f to get better scalability <coughs> Modelica. And uh, of course, uh, this, it has been good with Modia project because it gives freedom for innovation. So, uh, and uh, what we have shown is uh, a few algorithms that we have uh, investigated and also some new uh, experiences, uh, user experiences. So, um, I think uh, so far it's good and of course we hope that more people will uh, help out with the Modia investigations. I mean, it's a prototyping platform that we are building and, um, yeah. I think that's it. Thank you.